Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome and welcome to another bookshelf tour. Yeah. I'll be again moving soon. I knew that you guys wanted a bookshelf tour before I switched it all up in the new house. Oh, this is not the original audio for this clip. Even though the mic had been plugged in, I guess it was one of those times that it was just not plugged in right and it was white noise and that was my best attempt at trying to read my lips, but it was actually really, really hard. I can't refilm that. I really wanted some of that to still be in it because I felt like I looked really cute and I really liked my bookshelves in the background and obviously there is no chance of refilming that, but I still need to give you a little rundown of what's going on because that's what that intro was for. When I knew I would be moving, I figured that you guys would want a bookshelf tour and it was definitely widely requested. It was a really good set of shelves, honestly. I did a pretty good job in that organization, so I get why you guys wanted it. And I did save it for last minute. So this was actually filmed on the 23rd and 24th of December, so Christmas Eve, and I was supposed to be moving like the 25th. It was a lot of stress, especially because you guys wanted a long bookshelf tour, a really long bookshelf tour. You missed my old ones where I would just talk and talk and talk, which is not something I expected. When I uploaded my last bookshelf tour, which was a lot shorter than my typical ones, I thought that that was what you guys wanted. And that was not at all the response that I got. The response that I got was no, 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 please bring back your super long ones. Even if it's like the length of a movie, I still want it. I find it like a comfort and I like to put it on in the background. I did it guys. Three and a half hours of footage for this, namely because I went through every single one of my shelves one at a time, told you like the organization that I was kind of thinking with it, how I organized it, and then talked about whether I read or hadn't read all of the books on the shelf and pointed out a few like special ones. That was the idea behind what I wanted to do in this bookshelf tour. So it was three and a half hours long. So you should be grateful that I cut it down to this much. Just know I try to do it the short way and so many people did not want that. So that's why we did it the long way. And I'm sorry that it took so, so long for this to finally get edited. Again, this was filmed end of last year, which means that my precious Chala boy, T'Challa, actually makes quite a few appearances in this video. He was being a snuggle bug. And I knew that before I went into editing this and I knew I was gonna have a really hard time with it. It's a big reason why I've had such a hard time getting through all the footage of things that were pre-filmed. And this, I think, is the last of the footage that he makes an appearance in. I really was putting this off, not only because it was so long, but because I knew that that was going to be something that I saw in this. So I waited until I was finally in a good place where it was actually just a lovely little surprise every single time he'd make an appearance. This is going to have chapters. Look at those. For all the people that just like to put this on in the background anyways, enjoy. I really went through all of it. We're going to do a overview first. And then we're just jumping right into the video and then I might see you for the outro because I still don't know if that footage was also corrupted. But without further ado, welcome to the bookshelf tour at my mom's house. Enjoy.
I love you guys, and I hate myself, obviously. Okay, so starting at the very tippy top of my shelves, just because we're gonna go through this part rather quickly, I do have just a few random knickknacks over on this right hand side, like an owl crate box, camera case, like a bin filled with nothing important. And then I do actually have some books. And like I said, I wanna go over this rather quickly just because there's no really rhyme or reason to it. It's just that I'm out of space everywhere else. So I'm just gonna let you get a good look at it. Um, for the most part, they're books that either didn't fit like the <laughs> theme or like if they didn't mesh really nicely with everything else that I was putting on a shelf or a lot of them are also new books. Here, I'll zoom in a little bit just because my camera couldn't reach this high up. So I'm kind of on a table and don't really have the option of getting closer. So I hope this is all right. And I have a little mug at the end. So yeah, again, nothing really important with this shelf. I just was out of space. So let's just uh, actually get into the video now. And I meant to mention this, but sorry if the sound sounds different. I'm actually using my phone because <laughs> carrying around my microphone would have been a lot of work. So we're starting in the top, not technically my first bookshelf, but the first tall bookshelf. Let's just get in. So this shelf, I mostly wanted to be black books. I had that in mind when I was first setting up all my shelves. And so that's why there's mostly just like black books with white titles. And then I kind of included some with like some red in them. And then obviously over here, we have some extras that I had to start moving around when I got more books and they didn't fit as well with whatever shelf they were on. There's quite a few on here. I've read, I think most of them. I haven't read Five Dark Fates. I still want to read The Stars and the Blackness Between Them. Oh, I actually want to read this. Have not read Ninth, <laughs> have not read Ninth House. I've read Ninth House. Have not read Infinite Sea though. Haven't read Atomic Love, haven't read Woven in Moonlight, but this I actually read this year and really adored. It's The 10,000 Doors of January. It's just a very whimsical, like adventure novel with just a lot of elements that I tend to like in books. It has a very confusing, well, it's not confusing. It's just kind of, it plays along that line of real and fantasy and I really enjoyed it. I know that some people found it slow, but this really worked for me. Girl A read it, Tell the Wolves I'm Home. I've started it, but I had it actually returned to the library before I could finish it. Home Before Dark, I still really want to read. My Dark Vanessa I read this year. It is a hard book to read, but it was very, very well done. Very disturbing. So watch out if you are going to read that. All right, let's actually go to this one. All right, so the first skinny shelf, I really like how this shelf looks, even though it's not at my eye level. I think I put these ones in first and then I worked around them. So I have all of my Junji Ito books, which these are just so beautiful and the spines are gorgeous. They're just very aesthetically pleasing. So Uzumaki, Tomi, and Gyo. And then Frankenstein, which I thought went kind of well with this like white, black, and red look. And this is the soft cover, like Barnes and Noble version. Very pretty. I still haven't read it and I still really do want to. Knickknacks. So I have this Cirque du Rev's little coin holder with no coins inside actually. I love this. I think this is so pretty. We got it in an owl crate. I really wanted it to be next to my copy of Night Circus because you know I really love the Night Circus but it went so well on this shelf I couldn't help it. And then this is like a little lantern that I think we got in a fairy loot box. It might have been an owl crate. I'm not sure. And then we have Dracula and this is upside down because it's actually a Spanish copy. My cousin gave this to me. He got it from the library that I had gone to in Buenos Aires, which is like, I believe the biggest library in the world. And he brought that for me as a present because he knew I'd been eyeing it. And it's just so sweet. It is in Spanish though. So maybe one day I'll try and read it. Maybe I'll like it more in Spanish actually. I have read it, but in English. And then we have this copy of Where Dreams Descend, Gods and Heroes of Ancient Greece. This is the Barnes and Noble, like classic hardcovers, just to kind of tie in with the gold in this one. And this is the one that we got in Owl Crate, I wanna say. Owl Crate, yep, I was right. 
You'll notice that my black lights aren't on. These ones are actually my purple glowing lights. They make a weird tone within the camera, so I don't turn them on for these kinds of videos anymore. If you were curious, the way I secure them, I use like command hooks. I don't know, maybe I'll find a better way one day. On to the next one. Okay, sorry you're a little bit at a higher angle for this one. The tripod actually doesn't go this high, so I've been balancing you on a chair. You know, I put you on a table. We're just working with it. This is like a blue shelf. This reorganization that I did last time, I really wanted to just kind of like play with colors. And I do like it, actually. I'll probably stick to something similar whenever I go redo my shelves again. This is the only book that doesn't fit. It's actually empty. I gave it to my mom to read, but it's Infinite Country by Patricia Engel. I really, really loved it. Just a very interesting story about like a family that immigrated to the United States and how it's not all rainbows and sunshine and butterflies and kind of like the realities of it, but also the realities of the other half of the family that is still in Colombia. Now leave the world behind, not so good. All the stars and teeth is good. <laughs> I really like these. And To Kill a Kingdom. Letters to the Lost is one that I've been dying to read for a while and just still have not found time to. Hopefully next year I actually do. Bone Crier's Moon, have not read that. Girl Who Drank the Moon, very cutesy, kind of like mildly spooky read. I would read this around Halloween if you're the kind of person that doesn't actually like spooky things but wants the vibes. Now these are pretty spooky but are also vibes but I haven't read the fourth book and I don't own the fourth book yet either so there you go. They both die at the end. Uh, read it, read it, read it. Ooh, Archived and Unbound are underrated in my opinion but I also know a ton of people don't like it for like the valid reason that it's just very beginner for Victoria Schwab. Girl in this is so much like not like other girls but I still really enjoyed them. It has like a library of souls in it, kind of similar to what I believe Midnight Library or Starless Sea might be about. They might be totally different. I have not read those other two. Still really want to read Spin the Dawn and haven't yet. How to Make Friends with the Dark is dark. <laughs> um, this was a really depressing read. It's just a very like real situation that can happen to any teenager in the United States. It goes over like the foster care system. It goes over just like the gravity of death. It's just a very hard story to read, but I really did enjoy it. Sweet and Bitter Magic, have not read it. Circle of Shadows, mm, did read it, didn't love it. Dance of Thieves, have not read it, still really want to. And plus, look at how pretty this book is. She's stunning. Next shelf. <laughs> um, I don't believe I'll be able to point for this because you're kind of like in my only space that I can stand in because this is like that weird corner that's up against my table. But I'll try my best. This is pretty obviously just another all black books shelf but this one has like colorful titles which i thought was fun there's actually quite a few books that i haven't read i haven't read horrid or which is steeped in gold but i really really want to read which is steeped in gold uh among the beast and briars i have not read a thousand beginnings and endings is actually one of like the only book of novellas that i've read i loved this one so if you're actually looking for something like that with like retellings and short stories i would recommend this i haven't read river of royal blood really want to read like a love story fire and flood i still have not read and this was a book that i wanted to read based off of the irish readers recommendation walled city this is actually a really good book middle game i really enjoyed but it's thick to get through like mentally and like literally the savage song and our dark duet which might actually be like some of my favorite things that victoria schwab has done i think that she just does a really good job in duologies <laughs> all right let's go to the last skinny shelf in this little corner but i actually love how this shelf looks this angle and this lighting isn't doing it justice excuse the lighting guys it's very like warm color tones and kind of sunset vibes uh, the one that obviously maybe is the least like the others is the Will Smith book at the end. I just really like how that cover looks anyways, so I didn't want to put it up at the top where I have my books that I don't know where else to put. Uh, Fire with Fire, I have not read that, but it seems really interesting. Boneless Mercies, I have read and really, really enjoyed. I still have yet to read Heart of Flames, but don't worry guys, if you saw my five-star predictions for 2022, that book is in there because I really want to continue the series. I loved Crown of Feathers. And then These Hollow Vows, which that one really does give me kind of like low-key vibes of like Sarah J Maas slash like Holly Black. Now we're gonna go right down to this one. So this is the kind of collectory edition, also mostly Sarah J Mass shelf. I just really love these little mini editions of the Throne of Glass series, but I never found a really great way to display them. And I think that this works 
so well. This is actually like a little Aelin that one of my subscribers made for me a while ago and I love it so much. These are actually bookends that I got in a subscription box that are for like the Lord of the Rings, but I just doubled them up and then made it look kind of like an archway for her to stand on. Then I have my collector's edition of both Throne of Glass and A Court of Thorns and Roses in their slipcases. These are stunning, they're beautiful, but I don't want to pull them out right now. I'm sorry about it. This shelf like actually was one that I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. But now that I've been doing my reread of Throne of Glass, really am feeling extra nostalgic for this series. And as I say in a million, a million other videos, her work is not for everyone, but wow, does it work for me. Then we have this Aesop's Illustrated Fables from Barnes & Noble. I used to read Aesop's Fables with my dad when I was really, really little. This edition, which is the Owl Crate exclusive of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, read this this year. I adored it. It's actually what kind of got me back into physically reading, which is crazy to me because, I don't know, I just never would have expected it. If you've heard that The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue is about a girl that makes the deal with the devil and it's kind of like a romance. It's a lot different than just that. It's more about just life and what makes life worth living. The Language of Thorns by Leigh Bardugo. This is a very beautiful book with or without the slipcase. Come on. Leigh Bardugo makes some beautiful books. Now let's go over to another kind of classic-y looking shelf. First thing, we have the knickknack. This is actually just the jar that we got recently in an owl crate, and it's like a TBR jar. I love that it says Bibliophile Brew because Brittany the Bibliophile, you know, I'm very narcissistic in that way. These are more just very beautiful, classic looking books, books that don't have a dust jacket. Some of my Night World books, I'm slowly collecting these as I find them on thrift books too, but I haven't done them lately because obviously I've been on a book buying ban. Really loved The Night World by LJ Smith and I will probably always be scarred by the fact that it is unlikely she will ever finish it. This is a copy of Alice that I actually got when I was in Nancy in France. They had one of those like, what are those called? Like when you have like a little library outside of somewhere but the books are free, like a little book case <laughs> that you can just pick up a book for free. Like, I love like my history behind this book and it just looks like old and worn and interesting. And then we have Picture of Dorian Gray, which this is the Penguin Clothbound classic. I love these classic editions. Like, I feel like this is a classic that people tend to love. And I mean, I felt very neutral throughout. Call of the Wild. I still am not entirely sure if I've read this book. I know I've read the children's classic version, but I don't know if I ever read the official version. And of Green Gables, which I have not read. Peter Pan, which I also have not read, but this is like a really cute edition that I got in a Fay crate. My two 10th anniversary editions of Cassandra Clare books, so Clockwork Angel, which I think I like the most. This is beautiful. And it's also my favorite series that she's made, so City of Bones. And then Shadow and Bone, and this is also like an exclusive edition of it. This is the one that I believe Fairy Loot made. It still will go down as my least favorite ending of any series that I've loved, so there's that for it. These stunning sprayed edges. This is one of those quotes that I accidentally quote constantly. That's that. This is a very pretty shelf to me. It's like my purplies and light pinks and just this gives me good vibes, good energy. Let's start with I guess the little knickknacky thing but it's just a Nevernight mug and it has my metal bookmarks in it as well as like the bookmarks that I got from G for the magical readathon and this little adorable spoon that's a black cat. I love him a lot. I should use him for tea but I just put him here instead. Uh, let's start with like the books that I haven't read on this shelf. I have not read Vicious Spirits, The Prophets, Rock Paper Scissors, Liberty, we Are the Brennans, The Dating Plan, Beautiful Country, The Prison Healer, Sky Falling, Wicked Like a Wildfire. So I guess like about half the shelf. If you want something to like cheer you up, this is the perfect book for that. I just felt so happy after I finished it. It's great. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I mean, I clearly, I love that. Now the ones we're meant to find, beautiful cover, stunning, amazing. I did not love this book. It's not what I thought it was going to be. I wanted a happier ending than what this gave me. So next shelf. But I really like this shelf too. This is my golds shelf. Like the books that just, you know, scream gold. I have another gold shelf, but this is like, I don't know. This gives me Greek vibes and not just because of this and this, or maybe it is just because of this and this. 
who knows? Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. I still have not read this, still would love to. Chain of Gold. Let's not talk about the fact that I haven't read this yet. This is the fairy loot edition. It kind of reminds me of a Bible, I'm not gonna lie. This stunning beauty, this is lore. And this is the fairy loot edition of it. It's really pretty naked too, like, come on. Like, look at this, look at this. And the Odyssey, this is a Barnes and Noble Classics edition. I really like how this one looks. It's very neutrals. The Maidens by Alex Michalides. I still have not read this. Name of the Wind, love this. But this is just the like exclusive version of it. It's very beautiful. It's, mm. this is a shelf of gorgeous books. And there was nothing on here, right? So next. Very clearly, this is like a light green and aquas and blues shelf. I haven't read a lot of the books on here. Let's actually talk about the books that I have read because I've read Unravel Me Through Restore Me. Uh, we Were Liars. This got really big on TikTok this year. I personally don't get the hype. This is another one of those plot twists where I'm like, okay, like, and you did this for what? All Boys Aren't Blue. Love this book. Fault in Our Stars. Yeah, I read it. Of course I read it. Malibu Rising, Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is so far like my least favorite of the ones that she's written. I still really enjoyed it, but Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six hit way different for me than this one. How Lucky. This was actually pretty good. It's more of a mystery, I guess, than a thriller. It's about a disabled main character, but he's been kind of like in deteriorating health for his entire life, really is just kind of homebound, but he's very optimistic and amazing and lovely. He happens to see what he believes to be like a crime happen across the street and it's him trying to figure out the mystery. Another one that's more about like what makes life worth living. Wife Upstairs, I have read this. I actually really like this for thrillers. I just didn't love the ending. I've heard weird things about Love Hypothesis. I still have not read it. I did not know this is a fanfic about Kylo Ren and Rey. I guess I can see it now, but I did not know. <laughs> House in the Cerulean Sea. Finally read it. Loved it. Permanent record. Loved it. This is another one that was actually incredibly difficult to get through because it's hard for me to watch people's lives unravel. I get very existential, I guess. Female of the Species. Love this. This is a very good like revenge story. Not a drop to drink. I said that really weird, but I have read it. It's pretty good. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realize this was written by the same person. Now we're going, you guessed it, down. This is a white into gray shelves. I actually had originally tried to do it like all the way through. Like I wanted it to go white to gray and then bleed into the grades over on that other big shelf. It didn't really work out that way. I didn't realize I didn't have that many gray books. I think I've read most of the books on here. I haven't read The Raven King, which is the second book in the Foxhole Court. I have obviously read all of the Throne of Glass books. I have read the Mistborn trilogy. It's the only Brandon Sanderson I have read. I really did enjoy these. These are exclusive covers for the Game of Thrones series. Series, but they're really really hard to find and they're very expensive. Missed out on getting Game of Thrones itself like it was in stock on Book Depository when I first ever started looking at these but I waited too long and then it disappeared. I told myself that I'd only get these as I read them and since I've only read through A Clash of Kings and I still have yet to read A Storm of Swords I have not gotten the next one you know. Queen of Nothing the white regular edition but this is the book of the month one so it's really tall and, and it doesn't fit with the other ones that I have. These are the U.S. editions of Nevernight which I still don't have the hardcover of Nevernight itself. It's not in print anymore, like they have it as a paperback, but I could be wrong. We have Night Circus, which I love. This is, mm, this is everything to me. I love The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Turn of the Key is probably one of the first like thrillers that I ever read and I really did enjoy it. I guess like I didn't read Turn of the Screw, is that what it's called? I didn't read that and this is based off of that. So Curse of Dark and Lonely. I read the first book, wasn't crazy about it, so I haven't gotten the rest, but this is a very beautiful edition. Some of the Wayward Children series by Sean and McGuire. I know it's out of order. Heart of the Moors, haven't read it. Star Daughter, have not read it. Getting the Ninth, I did read, but it was a cool story. It just didn't leave a lasting impression on me, but I haven't read these last two either. I'm already so tired, guys. On to the next shelf. We're not even halfway through. Now, here we have another very pretty shelf. In my opinion, as you can tell, with my skinny shelves, I try to really make them as aesthetic as possible. First and foremost, let's talk about the knickknacks. A mug, then I have like a bunch of like character bookmarks in here, a deck of cards, which I thought just went with the vibes, a little black Funko Pop. This is supposed to be, I believe,
believe, like Sirius Black, but I treat it as Eclipse for Mia Corvair. Mia Corvair herself in all her bloody glory. I mean, she's awesome. I got this in one of these special editions for Dark Dawn. And then we have like my pretty, pretty books. Waterstones editions of the Shadow Hunter Dark Artifices trilogy. I didn't complete my trilogy until one of you guys actually were kind enough to send me your copy of Lady Midnight because you didn't want it anymore. So shout out to you because otherwise it would just kind of be a, a sad little duology. One of those other like soft cover editions, and this is Jane Eyre, which I haven't read. The Witcher, which this is the Illumicrate special edition that they did. It's beautiful. It's amazing. I wish that they would come out with the other books in this, but this is just the last wish. Classic ghost stories, one of those like Barnes and Noble exclusive hardcovers. On to the next one. Let's talk about my cute little baby. He's adorable. His name's Grindel. Again, I wanted it to be like gray into something else and I just ended up having a ton of these tones. I don't like to celebrate. Celebrate. <laughs> I don't like to separate trilogies. So this is where I put them. Like Scythe and Thunderhead. I still haven't read Thunderhead. So The Trials of Apollo by Rick Riordan. There are five, I believe. I only have the first three. Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. Still have not read that. Clap When You Land. Really, really want to read this, but still have not. Sisters of the Snake. Have not read. Deadly Education. I have. This is actually like the exclusive edition. She's beautiful. For these books standing up, I have not read any of them. Oh no, I've read The Survivors. I don't recommend it necessarily. Oh, I read Too Good to Be True too. Also like a domestic thriller, didn't uh, find it that surprising, I guess. City of Brass, I really wanna read. These are all books from nostalgic eras, I guess, like Hush Hush, nostalgia. Shadow and Bone, nostalgia, the original covers. Legend, nostalgia. Let's go to the next shelf. I'm getting worn out. I might have to take a halfway through break is a bit of a random shelf. I wanted it to be more of like my pretty kind of classic-y editions. I wanted to put these specifically somewhere and they're so colorful that it was hard to find a good place for them. So this is where it started. Then I added my two editions that are also in Spanish. I actually got when I was in El Ateneo in Buenos Aires. Alicia a través del espejo, which is Alice through the looking glass. And this is Alicia en el país de las maravillas which is Alice in Wonderland. Then we actually have my Halsey poetry collection, which this is signed by Halsey, which is so cool. Adam got it for me. Halsey's one of my favorite musicians, so this is very special to me. And I actually did read it this year and I marked it up. I didn't love it, but I really liked it. This little mug that one of my best friends got for me when she was in Disneyland one year, and it's filled with all of my woodmarks. These, which are actually all books that my mom got me this year. She was in England and she got me this collection of Shakespeare and it's very, very beautiful. <sighs> Stunning, amazing, beautiful. I love it. Yeah, she travels a lot for work, so not only was she in England, but she also went to France and she got me this edition of The Little Prince. I haven't taken it out of the plastic for a reason and it's because I'm moving and I just don't want it to get hurt. The Little Prince is one of my mom's favorite books, so it's very special that she got it for me. Books of the Louvre. Let's try to say it with a French accent. It's probably not gonna be very good. Le Louvre. That was okay, maybe. No, it's probably not that good. But anyways, this just has some history on why some of the art pieces are famous. This is when Adam and I went to the Van Gogh exhibit, the immersive Van Gogh exhibit that's here in Vegas right now. It's like the book that came with our tickets. It's like a coffee table style book. And uh, I haven't opened it. Actually, this one would look probably better up here. Okay, I'm leaving it up there. A quick peek. That's now what that shelf looks like. This looks better like this. <laughs> Let's go to this last shelf in this line before I lose my mind. Uh, this is my actual gold shelf. So you know how I told you on the other side that there, that was a gold shelf? This is like the yellow golds. I prefer paler golds. So this isn't like my favorite shelf, but I still think it looks really good. Two editions of Kingdom of Ash. And then we have the Queen of the Tearling and the Fate of the Tearling. I'm missing the second book, but I don't know if I'll ever read them in general. So probably not my first priority. King of Scars, still have not read this, but I actually am finally again in a fantasy mood and I have been looking at this one. Hate You Give. This is another one that I just like am regretting not having read yet. There are so many books on my TBR that I just feel like I need to read but I want to be in the right mood for. Shadow and Bone. This is the new edition cover. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Star Daughter. This is the gold versions. An arc for the Gilded Ones that came in Fairy Loot's box. Look at how pretty and shimmery these are. I don't, oh, I don't even know if you can tell. Can you? 
oh, the camera died. So um, I'm finishing up this audio, but I think that means I get a break now too. <laughs> We're back. Red shelf. One of actually many, weirdly enough. This is actually really cool. I was going through some of my old books that I'd packed away years ago. And I found that I actually had the arc for the bone season. I guess I must have gotten this, honestly, probably a thrift books purchase. And I just never really thought of it again. I've read the bone season, have not read the Mime Order. I haven't read The Last Flight or What Comes After or The Final Revival of Opal and Nev or Winter Counts. So I haven't read a lot of these books. Oh, also my nail chipped while I was away. I have read Crescent City. So um, there's, there's that, I guess. Let's actually show you really quick the differences between these ones. This version has the red sprayed edges and they're like slightly different in tone very metallic like foiled kind of gold this one's just like a metallic paint other than that they're basically the same on to the next all right it is a dark shelf i mean it's like deep indigos and blacks this is that other copy of lore that i have this one came i think in the owl crate box the removed i have read this i liked it a lot towards the end like you have to go with the flow of the writing one of your deceptions still have not read this unraveling of cassidy holmes i loved this book i really liked this if you liked daisy jones and the six i think that you would really really love the unraveling of cassidy holmes oh, a million junes this is one of my favorite books that i've read this year this is so good this also has to do with like death and grief there is like a story of magic wound up in this very real world like, i read it and then i finished it and then i reread it haven't read what once was mine have read sky in the deep mirage this is really actually a very good book as well starfish have not read straight on till morning have not read conceal don't feel i have house of salt and sorrows really good haven't read scavengers the stars though not much else to say over here let's skip on over we're on a blue shelf. Out of like the things that I've read, I've read The An Ember in the Ashes. I have not read The Kingdom of Back. I'm still really intrigued by this. I've read The Kiss of Deception trilogy. <laughs> Chaos of Standing Still have not read. Neither have I read Wonder, Beauty Queens, or The Bright and the Pale. Some Book of the Month books. I obviously work with Book of the Month every single month. I still haven't read Half Sick of Shadows though, and I would love to. It sounds really, see everything's really tight in here. It sounds really good. <laughs> Uh, the Night Swim. This is actually like probably my favorite thriller that I've ever read. Pretty dark, it's twisty, it kind of has to follow a podcast as a murder trial is going on in the same city and it kind of blends together into one whole story. Ariadne. I wish I'd liked this more. I still really like that I read it and I liked learning the story of the princess of Crete. The ending was so unsatisfying. That's not this fault though. That's just Greek mythology, I guess. Sweetest Remedy. Have not read. Kind of Sly. Haven't read. Girl in the Mirror. Have read. This would be one of the best thrillers I've ever read, except I hate. I hate this ending. It's a really good book. Like, please still read it because I just am very influenced by endings. Hunting Wives, haven't read. Neither have I read Everything We Didn't Say, The X-Hex, The Perishing, or A Flicker in the Dark. Oh, and I haven't read Red Queen or Glass Sword or Winter's Promise. Anyways, on to the next one. I really like this shelf. I think it looks really cool. I, it's just, it's good vibes. I have my little reading skeleton. He's sitting on a stack of books. Isn't that amazing? And he's reading a book because... What reader doesn't want to die reading? What does this say? It says Psychic Fortunes. I think I named him once upon a time, but I can't really remember his name, so sorry. Anyways, we have black and white books. Have I read every book on this shelf? Good for- oh, except for Lake's Edge. And I haven't finished Dark Dawn yet, actually. Two black editions of Death Note, which I really do want to collect them all. I've always wanted these, so when I finally started reading them a couple years ago, it was just kind of like an exciting moment. I always wanted to be the cool kid that had like the black Death Note books when I was in middle school, but my mom, I thought she'd judge me. So I didn't, I didn't think I was cool enough to read Death Note. And I guess now I think I'm cool enough. So that's character growth. Then we have my Poppy War trilogy, but I still have not bought Burning God on its own, though I do want to. This is actually the Ark, which now that I'm finally in a fantasy mood, maybe I will pick up the Ark. I've been saying I'm going to pick up a lot of books in this video. Please do not take my word for it. I'm just going to do my best. Then we have my Nevernight trilogy in the UK hardcover editions, which are really hard to find. If you're looking, I would suggest going to Book Depository or somewhere like Abe's Books. And I have two editions of Dark Dawn. This one I believe is the Waterstones. Let's find out. So this is the Waterstones exclusive 
edition. Look at those end papers. I want to see because one of my editions actually does have the Mr. Kindly drawing, which I always wanted, but I didn't know that he'd done in one of my books. So let's find that actually. Illumicrate edition, which is all yellow. It's not this one. Oh, but look at that. I actually like found this artist because of Jay Kristoff. Like I follow him on Instagram and I'm just very obsessed with his work. He's very very incredible i think his name is kirby rosanis don't quote me on this, the pronunciation i want to say it's actually maybe the god's grave edition in the u.s editions because this isn't signed neither is never night let's grab that we're a little off topic now but when aren't we you know i want to say it's this one yeah isn't that cool if you're like a jay Kristoff fan and you have some of his signed editions, try and see if you have a little Mr. Kindly. This I think is like one of his like first renditions towards the end was doing like a very stylized one, which was really cool. But I thought this was so sick to find because I really was hoping that one of my Dark Dawn editions would have. And when they didn't, I was really bummed and I was kind of going through some of my old books and then I found this one and it was just like serendipity. It was so cool. Let's put my nameless one right here. Let's go. A green ish shelf. First, we have shorter hardcovers kind of like stacked up over here. Before I Fall, kind of like a Groundhog Day contemporary, which I actually really highly recommend. I loved this when I read it. I did read it in like 2012 like or 13, so I guess take that with a grain of salt. A Song of Wraiths and Ruin, I still have not read. Forest of Souls, I am like so sad I have not read this yet. Uh, Study in Charlotte, I don't have the fourth book, which is probably best for this specific shelf because it's like yellow, I'm pretty sure. And I haven't read the fourth one either, but I really love the Charlotte Holmes series by Brittany Cavallero. Curse of the Specter Queen, have not read either. Look at this beautiful book, guys. Which is steeped in gold. We've already talked about the one that I have over there, but this is like the fairy loot edition and she is beautiful. The Red Rising Trilogy by Pierce Brown. I really like these. They're very like space drama e, but also war. It's kind of like Uglies on steroids. Oh wow, yeah, it's kind of like Uglies on steroids in space. I'm gonna unpack that later, but wow. Okay, that's actually a pretty good description. <laughs> Jade City, I have not read. Damnation Springs, I have not read. Sorcery of Thorns, I really love this book. It's by Margaret Rogerson. I like her first book as well, but I think this one is just like a masterpiece. Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi. This gets a bad rap. And I think for absolutely no reason. This is not Six of Crows with a different cast of characters. This is not that. Like, I've heard people call it that. I respect your opinion, I guess, but you're wrong. I enjoyed reading this so much last year. Mexican Gothic, though, it, it was a little underwhelming for me. Oh, what the? What? Did I know once upon a time that this was a gold book? Because I don't think I knew that. This is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I think I did know this once upon a time, but I forgot. Uh, These Violent Delights I actually really enjoyed. I have three copies of this book, which seems so unnecessary, but I got it one in Book of the Month, one in Fairy Loot, one in Owlcrate. So this is actually a little crown I got. I believe it was Disney Book Group that sent, and I love this crown. If this were to fit my head, I would imagine that this is the kind of crown that I would want to have if I was a ruling person. But I also also think that it goes just so well with Queen of Nothing. This is actually Queen of Nothing. This is the Fairy Loot exclusive edition. It's really beautiful. I am a huge fan of this. I don't think I could ever not have this on display. But behind it, because I'm out of room, are the rest of my Cruel Prince books. Yeah, this is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. I have them in all three, which are just like the blackened books. Blackened? That's a really weird way to describe it, Brittany. But anyways, these are those. And then I have King of Alfheim. This, I believe, is the Alcrate exclusive edition. Ah, here it is. Here she is. Cruel Prince. Uh, this is the Alcrate exclusive edition. She's beautiful, but I never got Wicked King or Queen of Nothing in these editions, so. This book doesn't like to stay standing, and I respect that as a fellow lazy person. But now we're finally on my short shelf. Oh yeah, let's do it. Can you believe that? It's 11-11. Didn't I start this at like... I don't even want to talk about it. Never mind. These are pink books. I kind of want to, I kind of want to do this. Mmm. And like, mmm. Not me reorganizing the shelf. We're here. This is what it looks like all along. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I think that it would be something that I really enjoy and I just have not gotten to it yet. Six Crimson Cranes. This edition is so pretty. Like very, very pretty from like the front and the back. Fairly just like gets it. Mm, I'm a big fan. I still haven't read it. Transcendent Kingdom have not read. 
have not read Girl, Serpent, and Thorn, or The Last Story of Mina Lee, or The Heart Principle, or One to Watch, or Once Upon a Broken Heart, or Death of Vivek Oji, or The Honey Girl, or The Inheritance of Orchidia Divina, or Anthropocene Reviewed, or Like Other Girls, or Slay, or Pride. But I have read all the other ones. If I could recommend one book, I think it would be this. It's kind of a random one. This feels like what, like a typical dad might want this kind of book. It's very like action packed, but it has a good message to it. People like her, I did not like, did not like this book. You had me at Ola. This is one that I've debated keeping or not. I DNF'd this book. This is the only book I think in my entire life that I have DNF'd. Black Flamingo. This is so good. It's written in verse. It's fantastic. And I kind of want to physically reread it. I listened to this on audio when I first read it and the audiobook was phenomenal, but I really want to physically reread it and kind of highlight throughout my favorite verses. Now let us move down. Second row still on my short shelf. This one is probably one of my least favorite aesthetically. Material wise, love it. My original like copies of Throne of Glass, which are marked up. So this version of Kingdom of Ash is the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition. It is the one that had this actually on the reverse of the dust jacket. And I just flipped it around put it in this way because it like perfectly lines up with Aelin's face on the side. The Gone series. Uh, gosh, every single time I've done a bookshelf tour, this has been- I didn't get that. Every time I've done a bookshelf tour, this has been in the wrong order. I swear I put it in the right order every time that I think I do it right. And then somehow it just gets mixed up again. I'm pretty sure this is the right order. You guys will tell me if it's not, but now I'm like getting anxious and I just don't want you to tell me. So I'm just gonna look. So it should be gone, hunger, lies. Yes, plague, fear. Yes. Did we do it? Did we break the curse? I hope so. This is a great series, by the way. If you have not read it, I recommend it every single time I do my bookshelf tour. It's a very dark, like mildly dystopian book. It's not really dystopian. They get trapped inside of their city. Everyone over the age of 16 somehow disappears and then like a brick wall is suddenly completely surrounding them and it's impenetrable and they have to figure out how to survive with limited resources and it's all kids 16 and younger but like I said it gets dark I mean just look at these titles and just know that that is kind of where each of the storylines are following Roanoke Girls I actually really like this Space Between Worlds I have not read Merciful Crow so I read Merciful Crow and Boneless Mercies at the exact same time period and I never remember which one I actually loved more but I'm actually thinking that it was the Merciful Crow that I liked more than the Boneless Mercies. I did like them both. There was just one that I liked more. I should reread them if I really can't remember. Crown's Fate and Crown's Game. I love this duology. I really do. This gives me really strong Night Circus vibes. Triangles, I still have not finished. Yeah, that must mean that this is my least favorite Ellen Hopkins book. I think it's her only, at least that I've seen, adult. We're gonna scooch it this way. I have another pretty green shelf. <laughs> I have not read Shielded, The Fallout, To Best the Boys, The Night Country, I Hope You Get This Message, or Fable. So really I've only read Seafire and The Hazelwood in this stack. Seafire was really good. I think that of all of the books that kind of came out in that time that had a very similar like piratey vibe, I liked Seafire the most. It was very steampunk in nature, which I thought was cool. I think I just heard a cat. And that's what it looks like, by the way, while I go check my door. Sure. Did you cry at me? Come on. Well, that was anticlimactic. I keep moving things in this shelf bookshelf tour. We have a knickknack. It is a little resand Funko, which actually, again, another subscriber made and sent. We have the piece de resistance because this is just... Mm. I might be biased because this is the newest books that I have gotten and they happen to be beautiful. Like, enjoy this. You're welcome. I... We'll just stare at this for a minute. These are the Illumicrate editions of the Jade City trilogy by Fonda Lee. I have not read this series yet, and I have a really strong feeling that this is gonna be right up my alley and I'm going to adore it, and I would have really regretted not getting these beautiful editions. By the time I read them, they likely will not exist anymore. And again, I had ran out of space, which is why it's just like this. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which we have talked about, that I adore. I really like Taylor Jenkins Reid writing. Stalking Jack the Ripper, I still have not read. I still think I would really enjoy this, but I still have not read it. These, oh, these are beautiful too. They're my A Court of Thorns and Roses series, but re-dust jacketed. <laughs> 
jacketed it. The normal cover is actually still under here. See, it's still right there. I love that they left space for the continuing novels. Either way, this is A Court of Silver Flames. This is also A Court of Sil Silver Flames. This is the one that I actually physically read and it's the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition. Let's go there. This shelf is whites mostly. I kind of mixed in some pinks. These are the newer editions of the Uglies series. I think it goes without saying because I've talked about it a lot somehow in this bookshelf tour. Uglies is probably like one of my favorite things that I still remember from childhood. Like I really want to do a reread of this series now and see if it still holds up. November 9th by Colleen Hoover. Nah, it's fine. I read this a while ago. My favorite Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren. This is actually my favorite book by Christina Lauren. I have not read Dating Makes Perfect. This is actually a book that my mom got me on one of like her work trips. It's just very special in that sense. Broke Millennial. I probably should reread it. I've only read bits and pieces of it, but it's like a self-help book. Get a Life, Chloe Brown. I think everyone really knows this book by now, but it's a very cute romance. We have All of You, which is a really cute little book that my boyfriend got me. I really love you. I want to stick with you, all of you. It's just really adorable. I love it a lot. And then this, which is flipped around, is actually an arc that we got in a fairy loot, and it's After Love by Tanya Byrne. A Peace and Turmoil, which I have not read, and I really still would like to. Same with A Lesson in Vengeance. Fortuna Sworn, which a lot of you guys actually keep telling me to read, which is ironic because I have read it. Uh, I just, I guess maybe I didn't talk about it very much when I did. It was good. I would definitely continue on with the series. It just wasn't like mind blowing in my opinion. This little flipped around one is another edition, you guessed it, of these Violet Delights. I'll see you tomorrow for the rest of them. See you in a split second. I actually really enjoyed this one too. Uh, like I said, I think that like colors are something that I really like to keep to in each of the shelves. I like having like a theme for each of them. It also makes it easier to organize. So these three I have not read. The Luminaries, The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt, and then A History of Wild Places by Shay Earnshaw I have not read. Now this whole stack, I believe mm, almost all of it I've read. I have not read What Kind of Girl by Alyssa Scheinmel or Smash It by Francina Simone. I really love A Tragic Kind of Wonderful. This is like a story of a girl with bipolar disorder, but it feels like a very accurate and interesting representation of it. I don't know, it helped me really understand this disorder a little bit better, at least in this way. Bipolar can come in so many different ways. There's so many different intensities, so many different sorts. Some are more manic, some are more depressive, some are more neutral, some are more on either end of the scale at all times. On the come up, I have not read either. Jeez, I need to not have a corner like this in my new shelves because I forgot that I own a lot lot of these books. Same with The Poet X. Um, I did read The Cheerleaders this year. This is a pretty good like YA thriller. Turtles All the Way Down I have not read and I haven't read Always and Forever Lara Jean or P.S. I Still Love You. And then this stack, I have read most of them again. Eleanor and Park. This is actually one of my least favorite books of all time. I keep it on my shelves solely to be able to use it for books or for videos like that, but I don't know. Maybe I won't keep it much longer. I don't like looking at it, I guess. My Heart and Other Black Holes and Spoiled are very, like, I don't know, 2012 contemporary style books. Winterwood was okay. So even The Darkest Stars, I also didn't like. Love and Gelato, have not read. Bone Houses, have not read. To the next shelf. Uh, this is like another dark books shelf, but this actually leans more towards like dark browns versus just blacks. <laughs> There's not much to say about this one. I have not read quite a few of them. The Four Winds by Chris Kristen Hanna I have not read. Neither have I read Black Sun, Kingdom of Souls, First Sister. Although I did start this one, I just didn't finish it. The Caged Queen. Oh wait. That's the order those are supposed to be in. Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman or The, the Queens of Innis Lear. I really have only read An Enchantment of Ravens and Savior's Champion. This is good. I kind of want to do a reread of this one day. I had really, really, really loved The Last Namsara, but then I found out that like the books that followed it were following different people. And then I kind of got discouraged from reading it because of that. Let's go to the next little shelf. Right, this is a red and black shelf. I really love how red and black look next to each other. This is a very beautiful version of Incendiary by Zoraida Cordova. It came in the fairy loot box, I want to say. Plain by Herons, which I did actually read. This is one of those like eerie kind of like maybe a little bit dark academia vibe books. Oh, oops. Camera died. One sec. 
Okay, I'm sorry if it's like a little bit more zoomed in or less zoomed in. I had to rearrange the camera, so. Then we have Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is actually another one that I've been really wanting to read and just have not gotten around to. Ooh, I kind of forgot that it looked like that. It's like a Red Queen origin story. The Afterlife of Polly Chase, which actually I adored. I didn't think I would like this as much as I did because I'm not like a very big Christmas person, as some of you may know. But this really got me into the Christmas spirit last year. I've been debating doing a reread today on Christmas Eve, but we'll see. I liked Blood and Honey more than Serpent and Dove, so I'll leave that there. What I lost, I've actually wanted to read this for quite some time. I never get around to it. Damsel, this one, mm, I have mixed feelings on. It's kind of a different one. This has to do with like the classic damsel in distress story, but it's kind of flipped on its head. There were some aspects in here that were just hard to read. And Empress of All Seasons, I have not read. Let us go down and then we're gonna kind of be finally getting out of this corner and we'll have better lighting, hopefully. Our last row of shelves on this one, we have kind of a little bit of a mishmash. I mean, we have like my mildly colorful i guess fantasies all actually by cinda williams china then we have like gamora and nebula right at the top um i have read all of these actually i really enjoy them they're very like old school fantasy and then we have some yellow books outlawed by anna north which i have not read what's mine and yours by naima coster i also have not read i have read the office of historical corrections which are like a series of novellas this is really good frankly in love by david yoon i did enjoy this but the more I think about it, the more frustrating I found the relationship itself. And Moonwalking with Einstein, which I always thought was going to be such a cool book about learning to, to remember everything. And instead, it is about how to remember everything. It's an interesting theory on how to remember everything, but it's not very practical. And on to the next skinny shelf. Okay, so here we have some like deep red books and also some like deep color books. I have no really better way to describe it. These actually ended up here because they're all kind of like weird heights to fit with my other tall hardcovers, but deep red books. I haven't read a ton of these actually. I haven't read Spectacle, nor The Chosen, nor Fire and Heist. I have read the Winner's Curse trilogy. I think the first book in this one is The Clear Winner. This is just another one of those like YA fantasy series from 2014-15. Like, Star, Touched Queen, and Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chokshi. These are some of my favorite short fantasy books. They're so, so unique and so cool. And I love Roshni Chakshi's writing. I think she does a fantastic job at like blending myth with reality, but also fantasy. Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyon. I actually really did enjoy this, but I never continued on with the series. I need to get on that because I think that I would have a lot of fun with it, actually. We Hunt the Flame. Ugh, of all the books that I've read on the shelf, this is probably like my most underwhelming one. I really do think that I will actually like the second book more, so I do have that on like my to buy list. I just think that this one, the only reason I didn't love it is that it suffers from under editing, but also like maybe like debut novel mistake. Let us go to the next shelf. This is a very blue and red shelf. I have a ton of series that somehow have blue and orangey reds mixed together. I've actually read the majority of the books on- oh, Chala. That's where the camera is, my love. I adore you too, but you're gonna have to scooch my baby. No, no, baby. No, 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 no. <laughs> my love. We'll play in a minute, okay? Just stay right there. Stay right there. Okay, good boy. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, well, come here. Come here. Just sit with me. There we go. He wants to cuddle. He doesn't understand why I'm sitting on the floor if we're not going to cuddle. Uh, the Last Magician, I have read. The Devil's Thief, I have not. Illuminae and Gemina, I have read. Obsidio, I've not. Gemina, I listened to on audio, and it was a really cool experience. Illuminae, though, I really liked the physical reading process, so I've been trying to decide what I want to do for Obsidio, but I feel like I'm leaning towards physically reading it. Oh, Chala, please, my love. I'm just poking at it. You, you have my other hand. Here we go. Children of Blood and Bone, I have read while children of virtue and vengeance i have not renegades arch enemies i have read supernova i don't believe i have i'm having a moment i know that arch enemies just took me a, lo a long time to get through but i don't think i've gotten to supernova and my dad is actually the one that's been begging me to get to this because he read the series loved it he finished it 
and he just always wanted me to finish Supernova. So maybe this is in the cards for next year. I forgot about it because it's in this weird bottom shelf. These are the UK hardcover versions of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. Strange the Dreamer I liked much more than Muse of Nightmares, but I did physically read Muse of Nightmares unlike with Strange the Dreamer. I liked Lainey Taylor's first series more, which I think is a very unpopular opinion. That series being Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Love Daughter of Smoke and Bone the most. Days of Blood and Starlight was meh. Dreams of Gods and Monsters was also meh. This Mortal Coil and this Cruel Design are really cool. They're like sci-fi novels. I don't know why I'm talking about them. Like I've read both of them. I haven't. I've read This Mortal Coil, but not This Cruel Design. It kind of gives me like old school dystopian vibes. Truth Witch, Wind Witch, Sight Witch, and Blood Witch. I have read all four of these. These are really cool though. The, the concept for the fantasy story and like the concept for the magic behind it is very, very intriguing. Sorry, Chala's being adorable. <laughs> They're best friends, and that's like the main concept of the novels is the best friends like while there may be other relationships that come to play like the best friendship is the main point and i love that you don't get to see that too often in fantasy books i feel do you guys want to see oh i look a mess but do you want to see chala now that we finished this, this shelf and we have to go to the next one yeah that's you mm-hmm I'm now thinking Chala really just wanted to be under me because he has just done that. We are on the next shelf. If it looks like a book is missing here, it's because I felt like there should be a book there, but I couldn't find one to fit nicely. So we're actually just gonna squish everything back together. It's one of the ones that I feel like needs the most work. <laughs> Nocturna by Maya Matane, and this is an exclusive cover of it. I very much enjoy this. It is like a Spanish fantasy story. This is just the regular US cover for Strange the Dreamer. Lobisona by Romina Garber. This is like an urban fantasy and it's written by an Argentinian author and the main character is Argentinian because there's a myth about lobisones in Argentina. And I actually asked my mom about it because if you didn't know, I am Argentinian and I did finally read this and I adored it. I gave it five stars. This was really, really good. Incredibly unique to see pieces of my culture in a book. I've never had that before, but I asked my mom about it and she <laughs> actually said, oh yeah, that is a thing. It's an actual myth in Argentina. The seventh born son is believed to become a lobison and because of that like people used to get rid of their children and then the government kind of had to get involved and we're like okay yeah yeah we'll take care of them. Then we have Circe by Madeline Miller. This is amazing. This is the book that I was comparing Ariadne to. And then we have Dune. This is like the exclusive cover that was being sold for a little. I haven't been able to find it in recent time. Definitely have to read this too because I did watch the movie and I feel like reading the book might be better. In a shameful place because it should not be behind anything but I'm out of space once again and that's Crescent City. This is the tour edition and then I have the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition of Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. There's like pictures throughout it which I think is so neat. I really like that Jay Kristoff has like such a passion for artists. This is that shelf. So let us go to the next one. I feel like you should see how Chala is currently under me. Yeah. Oh. I'm doing this with a cat in my shirt and he's very happy about it somehow. We have this shelf, which I actually really adore. So we have A Darker Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab. The silvery ones are Barnes & Noble exclusive editions and then the white ones are the normal versions. Vicious, I have read as well. Really, really like Vicious. I still have yet to read Vengeful. Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom which are beautiful. The normal hardcovers come with the sprayed edges, so those aren't exclusive or anything. I have actually been really dying to do a reread of these two. Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. I've spoken about this a lot. This is my actual all-time favorite thriller, spooky, spooky book, but it's like a sci-fi thriller. The horror aspect of it is spooky because it feels so real. It feels like something that could actually be in the Mariana Trench. Then we have another edition of These Violent Delight. 56 Days, I haven't read, but I actually really am intrigued by. Then we have Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the fairy loot edition of it. It is 
is so beautiful. It's all like the cheesy kind of like fantasy feels that I like to have. Imaginary Friends by Stephen Chbosky I have not read. Another version of Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is a really cool book on my shelf. A copy that one of my best friends got for me when she was in, yeah, Shakespeare and Company, Kilometer Zero in Paris. So freaking sweet. I mean, like this is like an exclusive cover that I never thought that I'd be able to get my hands on. So shout out to her. Now these editions of From Blood and Ash are actually the fairy loot editions that they came out with and these look really good naked as well this one has poppy on it this one has hawk on it i want to say and this one has kieran and the last book on the shelf empire of the vampire by jay kristoff this is the waterstones exclusive edition i have to somehow figure out how to move without chala actually getting mad at me because he is in my shirt currently okay Chala has finally exited. This is the last shelf on the bookshelves that you guys typically see. Then we just have to do the shelf in that corner. But this shelf is another very pretty one in my opinion. It's like oranges and yellows and just warm sunset colors. And I do love how it came out. And there's a lot on here that I have not read though. I mean, I have read The Wrath and the Dawn and The Rose and the Dagger. Kind of underwhelming. I've read Bloodlines through The Fiery Heart by Rochelle Mead. This is actually better than I thought it would be. Aurora Rising. I did like it actually, but I didn't continue on with Aurora Burning quite yet. Felix Ever After, this book is incredible. Incredible. With the Fire on High, I still have not read by Elizabeth Acevedo. Goddess in the Machine, I have not read. I'll tell you the ones that I have read in this area, and that is Arsenic and Adobo, which I actually did really like. I really do actually want to get to Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, and not just because it's a very visually appealing <laughs> novel to me. It's kind of like the only ones that I have to mention in that. This little stack, I have read all of the Heroes of Olympus series. I have not read the Red Pyramid like trilogy, the Cain Chronicles, I think is what it's called. And I think I would love it because Egyptian mythology was actually the first kind of mythology that I became interested in when I was a wee lass. I have not read Anxious People. I definitely have read Anxious People and I really, really liked it. I don't, I don't know, my brain was probably melted at this point in the tour, so... Or the last thing he told me, I have read Priory of the Orange Tree. I do want to do a reread of this. I think I didn't give it a fair chance because once again, this book was read when I was not really in my fantasy reading girl era. All right, we finally finished up these shelves. I'm going to give you a little overview of what they look like. Then we're going to go over to the one shelf that kind of hangs out by itself in the corner. Okay, I'm gonna sit as far away from the lighting as I can get because I didn't want to move Luna's chair. This is a very messy shelf. We're starting at the bottom of the shelf in that corner. This shelf is a mishmash, 100%, this whole bookshelf, but the bottom especially so. This is just paperbacks in all different kinds of sizes, but I do kind of like how this looks. I don't know why, but with hardcovers, I like very meticulous organization. With paperbacks, I want it to look messy. I don't understand the logic there, but but it is something that I do enjoy. So let's touch on the books that I have not read. Haven't read Reboot or the Lux books that I do have. Darkly Dreaming Dexter, The Sisters Grimm, or World War Z. Haven't read The Little Prince, which this book actually my mom got me. This is the first version of The Little Prince that she gave to me when she first told me that she really loved this book. I don't know what it is about a paperback looking like it's been just read a million times that appeals to me, but I do like it. Stormcrow I have not read. This is Harry Potter in Spanish, and I have not read it in Spanish. This I actually also got in El Ateneo in Argentina. Clipped Wings and Inked Armor I have not read. Beasts of Prey, neither. The Silent History I also have not read. This was actually given to me by a coworker and she loved it. It's kind of, and I definitely want to get to it. And I also have not read Quotes That Will Change Your Life. So I actually have read a good amount, I guess, of these. Sorry, things are falling behind me. Chala, please. We barely have, no, 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 no. Not the camera, baby. I know you're in a very lovey-dovey mood and I will give that to you the moment I'm done. Anyways, I remember staying up like all night on my bunk bed at my dad's house reading The Reptile Room in one day and that was the first like chapter book I'd ever read in one day because until then I'd just really been reading like Magic Treehouse. Wow. Chala, my love. Ugly Love I Have Read by Colleen Hoover. This is probably the book that made me decide I probably wouldn't like Colleen Hoover. So I guess if you really want me to do a Colleen Hoover book read video, let me know which ones are your favorites. Looking for Alaska. Yes, of course. This is actually my favorite John Green book. Yeah, do what you will with that information. That is that. So let's go to the shelf on top of it. This is 
actually a shelf that I really enjoy. It is my manga shelf, but also my Ellen Hopkins shelf. So like also poetry, I guess, in general. Hard covers I own of Ellen Hopkins books, soft paperback covers that I own of Ellen Hopkins books. I really enjoy her books. I like the previous stuff maybe more than the newer stuff. Rumble's probably my least favorite that she's made besides Triangles. This is what made me realize that I liked books told in verse and kind of like maybe my first introduction to poetry in a sense. The Princess Saves Herself in this one was okay. The Witch Doesn't Burn I still have not read. I hope this reaches her in time. I do want to say that this is actually a book that Mika has read and told me that she adored which just goes to show that poetry is like a completely personal experience because this is one of my least favorite that I've read. Sweet is Kind of Poison by Katie Wismer. This is actually a booktuber that I follow and I really loved her poetry collections. Everyone's read Milk and Honey, I feel like. And then I don't believe I've read Whiskey Words and a Shovel yet by R.H. Sin. That will be my next attempt at their writing. Fairy tale manga. I've read up to, I believe, the third one. I mostly got this because Rave Master is my all-time favorite manga. It's the first one I ever read. Naruto, that's actually my boyfriend's. Ultraman books that I got when I was into manga and I was just like wandering the manga aisle in Barnes Noble when I was very young. Orange, still only gotten halfway through the first one. I did really enjoy it though so hopefully I'll get to it soon. Let's go up to uh, my middle school phase shelf. Like that is the best way to describe this next shelf. Like I said middle school reading phase. This is the best way to describe this. Yes I read some of these before middle school but most of them I feel like could be described in that way. My original paperbacks and hardcovers of the Vampire Diaries, or sorry, The Vampire Academy. When I was young, at least, I did not care if all of my books matched. I just wanted to have them, which is like a very nostalgic era of book collecting. Angel Fall Trilogy, which this is actually a really cool trilogy. I've been kind of wanting to do maybe a reread of these and then have Adam read them just because I think he might enjoy the concept behind this. Uh, Generation Dead, these are like zombie books, but they give me warm bodies vibes because it's like zombies that might have a soul. The Maze Runner Trilogy, nostalgic. Divergent, you know, Allegiant has a close tie with Ruin and Rising for worst third books in a series. I'm I'm pretty sure I threw Allegiant. I don't think I threw Ruin and Rising. Like, I didn't like it. I was raging. I was seething. I was cursing up a storm, but Allegiant. I was so mad that when I finished it, I threw it across my room. But Divergent, I have clear memories of staying up all night to read it. Hunger Games. I want to reread Mockingjay. The Night World, my original versions of it. I would actually say that for LJ Smith, she is the author of The Vampire Diaries, but her best work is not The Vampire Diaries. I think her best work is Dark Visions. The main character in this one, I loved so much because she was an artist and it was when I was an art major in high school, actually. Or right before I became an art major in high school, maybe, that I read this. It was just cool to see her be an artist and have that be like her main form of psychic abilities. Forbidden Game, I didn't love as much, but it was still really good. Statistical probability of love at first sight. It was okay. It was cute. And my Fifty Shades of Grey, book one and three. I do not own the second book, I guess. Oh my gosh, have I read all of the books on this shelf? No. Oh, wait, I have not read Passing Strange. And One Shelf Up, even though now Chala has found his way back onto my lap and it is adorable. And now I have to kick him off again. He's giving me so many chances to cuddle and I am denying all of them and somehow that's making him want to cuddle more. I love you, baby. I have to get up, okay? And then we'll snuggle. Not that you're ever in the way, T'Challa, because you are my sweet angel, but I'm just trying to get through this. <laughs> The end is so near. We are on the Shadowhunter's shelf. There isn't much to say about this. It is a Shadowhunter's shelf. I have managed to fit almost every single Shadowhunter book that I have on the shelf. The Mortal Instruments series. We have Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy, Ghosts of the Shadow Market, Red Scrolls of Magic, The Bane Chronicles, Clockwork Angel, Prince and Princess, which is the Infernal Devices trilogy. Then we have the Dark Artifices trilogy, Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, Queen of Darkness, Queen of Error and Darkness, sorry. And then we have the Shadowhunter's Codex. I love this book naked. It is very pretty. I want to have more books without their dust jackets in my next iteration of library-ness. And then I only have the first book, Chain of Gold, because I still have not read this, so I refuse to get the second book until I've actually read the first book. I'm trying to be better about that habit that I had. I have a little Mortal Instruments cup that this actually came in a fairy loot for Chain of Gold. The Shadowhunter little light, which a bunch of you guys tend to ask me where I got it from. I got this in a Fay crate long ago. I don't know if it's still on their website, their little shop area, but if you want to check it out, that's where it would be. Let's go up. <laughs> We're so close to the end and you can feel my energy just dwindling, can't you? I just am like so close that I want to just be done. <laughs> 
graphic novels, actually all graphic novels, more typical graphic novel styles over on this side, my Monstrous series, which I absolutely adore. The art style is so beautiful. Teen Titans, Beast Boy and Raven, drawn by Gabriel Piccolo, which I love his drawings of Beast Boy and Raven. I haven't still read Lock and Key. I haven't read Paper Girls and Blackbird. I tend to actually go more for the art style than just the storyline because I am such a little art nerd at heart. That's actually how I found Skyward as well. And Saga, I finally got the second one, but I I haven't read it. Some of these are actually my boyfriend's books. So like this is like a DC Comics multiverse book that I got for him. Wanda and Vision Funkos. We have my Scarlet Witch reading her spell book. I love this Funko. This, which my boyfriend actually got for me and I think it's so sweet. He, I think, got it for me because he knows that I would wish for my Patronus to be a wolf. Venus in the Blind Spot by Junji Ito. This is like a hardcover version of one of his mangas. So Heartstopper volume one and two. Have read the first, have not read the second. Really liked the first. Cody by Jared Cullum. This is actually a book that I cannot recommend more. It is so, so cute, but brightly woven. I haven't read Tea Dragon Society. This is the Alcrate edition. Love. I love Katie O'Neill. Oh, look at me. Um, yesterday I had makeup, today I do not. So that's where we're at. Speak the graphic novel. Have it read. Check Please, which I also really want to read. It witchy. I do really like this. The Complete Cheese Sweet Home. This is actually more of a manga and it's so cute. If you like cats and you love kittens, this is for you. Good Talk, which I still have not read. Little Moments of Love, which Adam got for me. Stranger Planet, which Adam got for me. I love this comic. He makes like little aliens and I think they're so funny. This is actually a Little Black Book by Otega Uwagba. I have read this, but I listened to it on audio and I feel like reading it physically would do me a lot better. What? I didn't know these were here. I have like little um, photo strips from college with Adam. Look at this. Who would have thought? And now we have officially one shelf left. So let's just do it. And this is here because I couldn't actually find a different place for it, but I would rather it not be with like my graphic novels. It's not a graphic novel, you know? Okay, excuse the angle on this one. My tripod has no real way of getting up here, so you're on top of my table. Here we have more paperbacks. These ones, which are more of like my romance. We have The Bride Test, The Kiss Quotient, uh, Odd One Out by Nick Stone. I was underwhelmed by this one. The Boyfriend Project. I read this and I really enjoyed this. If I Never Met You, pretty cute. I like more smut in my romance and this doesn't have very much. It's a fade to black scene, so if you like smut, this is not for you either either. Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. I loved Crazy Rich Asians. I didn't like the next two books in the series as much, but Crazy Rich Asians was so good. The Troop by Nick Cutter. This is not a romance. This is a thriller a la Stephen King. I did not like this. This is disturbing. Fellowship of the Ring, which I have read, but I have not read yet. Two Towers or Return of the King. These copies are ones that my dad got me so long ago when I first started getting into fantasy and he was really excited for me to get into big kid fantasy and I, I'm sorry to disappoint dad, I still have not finished them. El Nombre del Viento, which this is the name of the wind, but in like the other cover version and it's actually obviously in Spanish. I got this in El Ateneo as I've gotten all my Spanish books that I've talked about so far. And then we have Wise Man's Fear, which I actually am finally ready to read this year. The Making of a Story, this is actually a book that I got for like a college class, but I kept it because I think it would be very interesting if I ever do decide to write my own book. Punk 57 by Penelope Douglas, the only Penelope Douglas book I own and actually my favorite of the ones I have read. The Psychopath Test, this is actually a really interesting novel. And then we have my Witcher books, so The Last Wish, Sword of Destiny, and Blood of Elves. I have not continued the series since Blood of Elves, but now that the second season has come out, I really want to. I love The Witcher, by the way, guys. I actually really adore the novels. I started The Witcher with the video game, then I read the books, then I watched the series, and I can with confidence say that all three forms of this story are phenomenal. Then we have The Hobbit, which I have read. Actually, this is the whole reason why my dad got me Lord of the Rings, because I read this in high school, and he was like, well, now you can read the rest of them. Hating Game by Sally Thorne. I liked it. Classic Tales of Horror by Edgar Allan Poe. I really like Edgar Allan Poe. The Four Agreements. My mom actually gave me this to read. Sorry, mommy, I still have not read this. I have read Gods of Dude and Shadow. I actually like this more than Mexican Gothic. Complete Tales of Edgar Allan Poe. The Power of Myth. This is a really cool book. Unite Me, the novella and Shatter Me, Slow Regard of Silent Things. I have not read 
but it is like a novella in this series. Queens of Fenburn I have read, Song of Achilles I have read, really loved. This is very cute. This is the best Madeline Miller book, even if I really loved Circe. The Way I Used to Be I have read and I really liked it. Have not read an absolutely remarkable thing. I have read the fifth season. I did enjoy it, but it is a lot. Like it's a lot to remember. I would probably have to reread it if I ever wanted to continue with the series. Haunting of Hill House, read it, did not like it, loved the show much more. The last book's Warm Bodies. Cool. Which I have read, by the way. So that is it. And I can now finally get on with Christmas Eve shenanigans. I guess I did forget to mention that on top of this shelf, I just have my record player. It's not normally up there. I just was trying to clear up space. I would not keep a record player on top of shelves, nor my records. I like to be able to get to them, but I just put that there for right now. <laughs> so um, yeah, now it's actually done. So I guess I shouldn't even be surprised that the outro footage was also corrupted, but yeah, once again, editing Brittany to make an appearance in this video. She has made a lot of appearances, uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I know it was a lengthy one. I'm not sorry. A majority of you guys asked for it to be that long, probably longer. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was great background videography happening and i hope you enjoyed the little clips of chala just jumping on in and snuggling and i hope that you got something out of this and liked how the shelves were set up i personally loved it but now i can't wait to be able to reorganize these ones because right now they're just in there and to be able to i guess one day show you this all again but it can wait it can wait for sure so thank you all so so much for watching I hope it was long enough for you, and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye. Love you. Okay, bye. <laughs> Bet you thought that was real. No, once again, I'm voicing over. Look at her. She's so confused.